Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to build a drop. I'm going to show you all the different elements of it. That way, if you're making this type of music and your drops feel like they're kind of lacking, to make sure that you can kind of go through a little checklist here, make sure that everything is filled in in case you're lacking some depth or some width or whatever it might be. So we'll go ahead and start from the top and then work our way down. But before we do that, let's go ahead and start with one of the most important parts of kind of leading into a drop, and that's of course going to be some type of vocal shot. So here I have a vocal from Ray Volpe. It just sounds like this. There is some processing on it, so I'll just go ahead and solo the whole group. So we have the main vocal here, and this has a little bit of effect on it. So we have the utility that's going from mono up to a wide width just to add a little bit of extra kind of impact when all three of the vocal samples are playing at the same time. So we have that main one. one two, three, let's bounce. So you can see if you're listening or hear if you're listening in headphones that it's really narrow here, really wide here at the end. Next, we just have a lower one, I believe. Or that's going to be our higher one that's just going to be for a little bit of an extra kind of stereo image that one is just pitched up an octave and we're using the complex but even the complex probably would be fine Let's bounce. sounds like even a little bit better needs a little bit of eq right up there Let's bounce. Let's bounce. Let's bounce. Let's bounce. Let's bounce. somewhere in there Let's bounce. and then of course if you see the trend we have a low one down here too Let's bounce. Let's bounce which I think is adding the most kind of dimension to it. And they're offset a little bit from each other just for some extra impact again before the drop. On top of that, we just have a little bit of kind of tension with these chords. And that's just going to be a serum, a ton of unison on both octaves or on both wavetables, I should say. Oscillator A is down an octave, oscillator B is up two octaves. And then we just have some detune on both. And then, of course, we have a fill. And then we have a symbol going into that. So I'm going to go ahead and just loop this all together and probably should show you what it all sounds like. So here's everything all together. So let's go ahead and start actually from the top and the bottom. So first thing, we have some sidechain. We're using Duck Buddy for everything here. So basically what Duck Buddy is, is I believe it's a Max for Live instrument. And what it's doing is it's taking whatever you have it on. So if you have it on a group, and then it's basically just like a sidechain, completely muting the volume of whatever you have it sidechain to. Here I have it kind of like a little short slope. So if you want it to be really, really heavy, you can bring this down. And then you also have control of the depth and the length. I think this is how it loads in. I'm not sure if I change this or not, but that's how I have mine set up. And then I just have it to this Serum Trigger track, which is just a saw wave. Now we have some drums here. I don't really post-process my drums too much, especially my kicks. Um, all I do is I have them set up in a group with full parallel processing. This is it's a glue compressor preset. And then I just have the makeup on a little bit or up a little bit. And then I believe I turn the soft clip on. I don't think it's on by default. And I don't think I mess with the attack release or ratio. Now for a kick, we just have a pretty punchy kick. You want to make sure you have one that's going to cut through the mix. And then for our snare, I do do a little bit of processing for that. Sounds like this without the EQ. So we're just taking out some low end, boosting the high end a little bit so it cuts out. That might even be a little bit too much high end, and then taking out some nasty frequencies in here. Kind of that like hissing noise. Now, in this kind of genre where you're layering the snare with the kick, I don't find that I don't really need any of this low information. Maybe you want to pull this back a little bit if you're working on a different genre, but I find this kind of 200 hertz range gets pretty muddy. So generally, I would say to take that out. But of course, it's up to you. Now, for our cymbals, we just have a layer here. We have this in our tops and fills group. That, again, has our full parallel processing with that sidechain. And then we have a group within that with just our tops. And we have everything over about 500 hertz being taken out of. Cymbals don't need to account for any low in frequency we're just adding some kind of splish splash extra background information now we have layers here we have three different ones doing different things we have a kind of kick snare layer we have a ride ish layer and then we have a hat layer this is basically just one of them sped up and then we have for the beats we have this uh, preserve at 1 8 we have it to stop and then just at 30. All together, the symbols sound like this. I 
And then of course we have that fill right there. Loan is being taken out of that as well, but you could probably drag it up here. We can probably use a little bit of that loan for information. Maybe not that much, bring them back just a little bit. Now, no post-processing on the low end, and if you notice for my saturator, I have this just about on every track with the soft clip on. That way we don't have any clipping issues. Now, moving into our bases, probably the most crucial part, apart from the rest of the background elements. Um, what I do here is usually I'll work from samples and then I'll start layering like this. So we have a couple from NASCO's Patreon. They sound like this all together. So you can tell they sound pretty dry apart from the actual reverb throw. We have a layer on top of that. Kind of like a talky layer, and this is just within Serum. So we're using this cutting wave table. Um, I'm not sure which one this came out of. I don't know why it's not showing me, but if you recognize it, it's just a dirty wave table. Just whatever you can find that has a lot of information going on it. We have some LFO modulation, some FM going on. And then of course for our oscillator B, we're using 4088 with the format, and that's how we're getting that kind of talky noise. We have the drive up a little bit, the format down a little bit, and then the key tracking on. And then for effects, we're just using some dimension along with the hyper, or just hyper in this case. Distortion, we're using diode one, and then some multiband compression. Just an extra little background layer, not really supposed to be a main sound, but just to add a little bit. And then we have one more. <laughs> More like of my kind of signature sound, just kind of a basic uh, growl or wobble. This is using a rocket powered sounds wavetable, bin minus. And I think what I did was I actually went into my menu and I rendered the oscillator with the bin plus, and then I have the bin minus going on it as well. So it has a little bit of a different characteristic for unison. Wavetable down, but we are modulating the wavetable and the bin minus. And then we're just using a low filter to clean it up. No effects on this one. All together. <laughs> And then if we go ahead and solo everything, adds a lot more depth to it. And then last but not least, what I did was to create sustain basses. What I like to do is take something like this, right? And if you just play it out, what you can do is you can actually record that and then freeze it. And then you can start to process it and then pitch it. And then that was just that bass from up here sustained out with some effects on it. So we have the virtual right fat rack on here, the excellent, or I don't know how to say that actually, fat rack as well, just to make it really beefy and then some OTT on top of it. This is free. This is from Virtual Wyatt's Patreon. Would recommend them both. And then for our actual whole group, we have this Noetica base processing. This is from his website. I think it's five bucks for a ton of packs. So I would recommend that highly. We have some OTT on here, some distortion. We have a little bit of sizzle for some high end. We have the reverb throw. That's why that reverb is coming in randomly. So you can see what my curves are here just to fill in towards the end of the space, give it a little bit more impact when a new bar is starting. And then we have a little bit of disperse on here, which is like a disperser emulator. Basically, it's just a bunch of EQs tied together that give it a little bit of like a kind of wet sound. EQ. Taking all the low ends, since we always use a separate sub. So multi-band compression to make sure our levels are good. Duck Buddy again, and then we're just using some saturator for the soft clip. Again, all together. So pretty cool all together. Pretty basic as well. Probably put this together just in a few minutes. But with just a couple layers, you can make it sound pretty decent. Now, what I was actually, or what I like to do a lot is make sure that my background is sounding right. So I have a synth group here, EQ, multiband compression, duck buddy. But what we're doing here for this serum is we're using the same serum that we did with those chords, but we have some effects turned on when it happens. So we have this Valhalla Supermassive and we're using the Sagittarius preset or the mode with the carousel preset. It makes it sound pretty cool over time. If I go ahead and just solo this. So I'm a pretty big fan of the Supermassive plugin. I believe it's free. At least it was at the time that I got it. We're just taking that some low end for it so it's not competing with any of our bases. And then we just have a layer here with like a kind of a low end saw stab. This is again from Ray Volpe sample pack or one of them. And that's just layering it so we get a little bit of tonality towards the end of it. Have something or somewhat of a melodic element playing throughout. And that's what these synths are taking care of.
So this one's pretty cool in my opinion. And then we have the effects. So this is what's adding a lot of that kind of tension in the background. So first and foremost, we have a Moon Boy atmosphere. Now, if you don't have sample packs like this, this is what this sounds like. In this case, as you can get a sample, let's say even just this saw, and then you just go into your clip, and then you can go to envelopes, you can go into your mixer, clip, transposition, and then what you can do is just as soon as like this, where you're making a big semitone adjustment, and you can have some like chaos in the background, some tension in the background. That's the easiest way to do it if you don't have any samples like this. Otherwise, Splice has some pretty cool ones, like this company one that sounds like this. And of course, for effects on both, just have the saturator on both. For our effects group, we are using that EQ again. And then we just have some Vox in this group as well, with the width being modulated due to this first one, not actually during the drop. Altogether, the effects sound like this. So a pretty a simple effect stack, but without it, if we actually listen to the drop, So a kind of a pretty minute difference since there's so much going on, but if you're really listening for it, you can hear the effects going on in the background, which I think adds some more depth, makes it sound a little bit more professional or at least more like what bigger dubstep artists are doing right now. And then last but not least, we have this sub. We have some multiband compression on the group. EQ, we're just taking out some low ends so we're not competing with those bases. And of course, a duck buddy. And then we're using this sub stack that I have. This is just a NASCO sub, but basically how you can emulate this is if you use the basic shapes, you could just do that and you can get a pitch envelope modulating the course. And that just has a little bit of a attack because of that pitch. For this, we have some overdrive just to boost the low end. We have an EQ to boost the low end as well. And then just a soft clip on top of that as well. And of course that's providing all of our low end. And a good tip that I have too, is depending on how you mix, I always try to set my sub around eight decibels or negative eight decibels. And I feel like because of that, it's easier for me to mix because I have a general idea of where things are in the first place. So I don't have to kind of fiddle around and mess with my sub levels or my bass levels, whatever, everything could just follow the sub levels. So again, everything together. <laughs> Hopefully this can give you some information that you might have lacked before, or at least just give you some understanding of what other artists might be doing to make their sound sound a little bit better or make their song sound a little bit more full. So with all this being said, I hope you learned something from today's video. Thank you for watching and we will see you again in the next one.